Hello again and a good morning to you. I hope you're all well. Uh, it's time for another midweek pub walk in Essex. So today I'm in the village of Pleshy, which is near Chelmsford. Once again, it's from the book Essex Pub Walks. You're going to want OS Explorer Map 183, Chelmsford and the Rodins, Maldon and Whitton. I've been to Pleshy a few times before. Uh, on a couple of day walks. In fact, I think I'm actually doing the same day walk as I've done before. Um, it's about half eleven in the morning. I've got to be in work at 5pm again, so I've got time for this one. It's five and a half miles this walk, and yeah, it's one of my favourite villages, Pleshy, actually. Uh, the Essex Way passes through here as well. And yeah, a lot of old houses, uh, there's a really nice church. Uh, I'm starting from the pub here, the Leather Bottle. Now the walk's actually meant to start from the White Horse Pub, which is just up the road, but it's closed down. So I pulled in there and it turned out it's a house. <laughs> so I'll show you the, pub, uh, well, the house now anyway, but yeah, this will be our pub we're starting and finishing at this time. Uh, we'll be going to, I think we're going to Great Waltham, I believe, which has got another pub there called the Beehive, from what I remember. And also in Pleshy, there is the remains of the Norman Mott and Bailey Castle. So I'll try and show you some footage of that. Um, unfortunately, it's private property, and you have to obtain permission, sort of like book an appointment to view it. Um, I've tried calling them up, no answer. So don't really know what the plan is but I, I've never been able to actually view the castle before so if I can obtain permission that would be absolutely brilliant but we'll have to see I might go and knock on the owner's house or something like that anyway so yeah the weather it's a bit cloudy overhead there's been a few spots of rain but hopefully it'll hold out so yeah enough talking and let's get walking so this is this is part of the mot of uh, the moat sorry of Pleshy Castle and yeah this is Pleshy Mount viewing area really nice there's an information board over there of course I'm reading that out to you <laughs> just read you a bit about the walk Pleshy is a small rural village deep in the peaceful heart of the Essex countryside it is dominated by the earthworks and ramparts of its Mott and Bailey Castle but as many other old buildings and cottages some thatched and a fine 12th century church almost opposite the White Horse, which of course is now shut down. <laughs> the surrounding area is ideal for walkers and there is an extensive network of footpaths and bridleways giving plenty of different routes to choose from. This circuit takes the walker from the heart of Pleshy along part of the Essex Way to the neighbouring village of Great Waltham and returns along the ridge enjoying views across open countryside. Sounds lovely. As I say, I think I've done this walk before. It is pretty good. Uh, the White Horse pub, or now a house, dates back to the late 15th century and some of the original timbers and flooring can still be seen inside. Um, it says it used to be rambler, rambler friendly, even had a gift shop inside as well, which is quite cool. Not anymore though. Um, so yeah, so this is the moat. It's so nice here. Pleshy Castle was built in the 12th century by the de Mandeville family at the time of the Norman Conquest. Powerful among the nobility in 1140, Geoffrey de Mandeville II was rewarded with the title Earl of Essex. However, his involvement in political power struggles during the reign of King Stephen led to his imprisonment in 1143 and the loss of the castle. Pleshy was later returned to the family but passed to the de Bowens by marriage in 1227 to 1228 and subsequently to Thomas of Woodstock, Duke of Gloucester in 1374. Documents show that the castle was a large and wealthy household for the next 40 years after which it passed to the crown and became part of the Duchy of Lancaster. By the mid 16th century it had become ruinous. Pleshy is one of the finest surviving examples of an earthen Mott and Bailey castle. The great mound or Mott formed its central defensive feature surrounded by a moat 
whilst most of the domestic life of the castle was centred in the adjacent bailey, a kidney shaped enclosure protected by a bank and ditch. So you probably sort of see that on a lot of documentaries, that sort of style of uh, early castle. The aerial photograph shows that back lane is very similar in size and plan to the castle bailey and it's probable that this street marks the position of a second, possibly earlier bailey. So you might just be able to see some of these aerial photographs. There's sort of like, um, there's the mot where the keep would have been and then you've got the, the bailey and the ditch there. And I think there's a second one there. Back lane I think goes along there. Castles such as Pleshy attracted settlements to serve the domestic and economic needs and the bank and ditch of the town enclosure can be quite can be seen quite clearly. Uh, let's see where that is. Um, unfortunately the numbers have worn off of this but I think it's sort of on the outskirts there around the village. Uh, the original parish council church was inside the town defence, so that would have been sort of in here somewhere. Uh, the present church, which I think is somewhere here, was built for a small religious house founded in 1394, located just outside the town enclosure. The massive earthworks which remain today would almost certainly have been capped by timber palisades and would have enclosed a wide range of buildings. Excavations on the mot in 1907 discovered foundations of a rectangular stone building. So that's A here using this diagram now. This was thought to have been the keep, uh, been the keep a strong tower combining domestic and defensive functions. However, documentary evidence suggests it may have been the 15th century Great Hall. Between 1959 and 63, the foundations of a chapel, B, uh, were uncovered and traces of other buildings can still be made out in the uneven turf, just about here. The original entrance to the castle may have been on the east side of the mot, which is over there. Excavations in the 1970s examined the area around the late 14th to 15th century brick bridge, one of the earliest and finest examples surviving, which is E. So I probably would have seen that through um, through the gate, so I drove up there earlier. Uh, today it is difficult to imagine from these remains what life was like in the castle. The de Mandevilles and its later owners would have had extensive households of retainers, officials, craftsmen and labourers working in the castle and on the family estates, many of them living within the castle. The castle service buildings, such as uh, kitchens, stores, workshops, would no doubt have been in sharp contrast to the family apartments, tapestries, bed covers of gold and silver, cloth, fur coats and a magnificent library are among the possessions recorded in an inventory made after the death of Thomas of Woodstock in 1397. Uh, they built this viewing area, um, it was bought by the Essex County Council in 1979 to preserve an open area within the village. Um, yeah, it's owned by the trustees of the Langley's Children's Settlement, so you can only be visited by appointment, the castle, sorry, um, through their agents, Stratton Parker Chelmsford. I've got a telephone number here. On payment of an admission charge, they want to charge you to get in, so, well... Um, I might give that number a call in a minute then. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. That's just telling about sort of who it's protected by. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, the castle was one of the most important institutions introduced by the Normans. In addition to their defensive function, they formed domestic and administrative centres of estates granted by William the Conqueror to his followers. The remains of a number of medieval castles can be seen in Essex, although they vary in size and structure. So the ones that are open to the public, it's got a little sort of map of them here, Pleshies here, you've got Colchester, which is there, uh, then you've got Castle Headingham up there, Rayleigh, I don't think I've ever been to Rayleigh, I can't remember exactly where that is now, 
Saffron Walden, that's up there. Stansted Mount Fitchett is there, and Hadley's there. So yeah, that must be uh, Rayleigh. I never knew there was one there. I might have to look into that. Anyways, yeah, so I went on a bit there, bit of history for you. So uh, yeah, we better get some walking done. <laughs> Right, <laughs> this will make you laugh. I've just contacted that number on the board there about uh, maybe visiting the castle and it turns out that they haven't managed that property for quite a few years and that is out of date. So if you come in here, don't call that number, okay? Because they, they just mug you off. So I don't know who actually owns the castle anymore. Um, I'm gonna go and have a look up there and sort of see if there's another number, but they're not about I might even be able to just jump the fence <laughs> so we'll see anyway right I've got to get some walking done anyway <laughs> so this is uh, the white horse which is of course now house you can see they've still got the old sign there and They've got this really nice old pargetin on the walls as well. Yeah, I, I remember it actually before it closed down. And it was quite a nice little pub. It was more of a restaurant sort of place. But yeah, really nice in there. Right, we're still on the Essex Way and this isn't part of it, this isn't part of today's route but this uh, reminds me of, yeah, when I did the Essex Way uh, one of the sections that I did on my own it was raining quite heavily at the time and this was like flowing quite fast and I remember I was looking for somewhere to camp for the night and for what reason I can't remember I couldn't get in the pub so I couldn't collect any water from there so I collected some water out of here and I think when I got to it was outside of White Notley I think I like I you know set up camp and yeah and the water was fine to drink I boiled it I filtered it and all that but stupid me what I hadn't done was after submerging my hands in the water to use the the soy bag to collect the water I didn't wash my hands so the next day when I got home <laughs> I had a big plate of sausage sandwiches and I'd forgotten to wash my hands I know it sounds awful and yeah that's when I caught Giardia or Cryptosporidium whatever it was a waterborne parasite anyway and it was from here <laughs> so yeah that's brought back some memories um, yeah if you've been a subscriber for a while you may well remember sort of one of those videos sort of the earlier videos when I did that and yeah I lost about three kilos in weight which for me is not good I know some people would love to lose three kilos but I can't afford to I'm naturally slim so yeah I look like death and uh yeah both ends that's all I'm gonna say it was like someone switched on a tap and left it running so yeah, you don't want to get a waterborne parasite, believe me. Always, of course, always filter your water and boil it. Um, put tablets in it. Do all that stuff. Use like sort of three, three forms of purification. But most importantly of all, wash your bloody hands <laughs> after you've collected the water. So I've learned my lesson from that. And yeah, I make sure I always do that now if I need to collect water. Anyways. Not a lot to see at the moment, just a lot of uh, farm fields and they've ploughed them as well so they look even less interesting. 
but it's nice to be out as always. Hello. Right, we're now entering Great Waltham. The, the Beehive pub should be up ahead of us. And as you can see, the church is there in the middle of the screen. Um, yeah, apologies for the shakiness of this one. My selfie sticks just broke. <laughs> um, I was setting up for a shot and the wind blew it over and just smashed it in half somehow. I've had it a while and it was on its way out anyway, so I'm just having to do this handheld until, yeah, until I can get a new selfie stick. We're outside the Beehive pub in Great Waltham and it's open, so let's head in for a drink. Got myself half a pint of Thatcher's Gold Cider for two quid. Just sat here by the road in a little beer garden. Oh, we've left the pub. Let's go and have a look in the church here at Great Waltham. Okay, here we are inside the church at Great Waltham. I've just spent probably an hour uh, chatting to this bloke. As I was uh, filming the outside of the church, he come along and we got chatting. It turns out he's like the church warden and like local historian. Um, he's completing his degree in history. It's got to be in his 60s, I'd say. Peter, his name is, and he's going to email me details of how to get into Pleshy Castle or who to contact about it but he's given me a tour of not just the church, the graveyard but also um, certain houses in the village as well, I can't believe it he does tours round here regularly and he's told me some absolutely fascinating things I nearly asked I told him about YouTube and stuff and what I do and I, I wish I'd have said to him, you know, do you mind if you sort of do a little tour for here, but he was telling me about, let's get this to focus, the piscina here, um, with like the mass, when they'd sort of put the residue from the bread and the wine down there, it actually flows into the brickwork, not outside to an, an exterior drain. The reason being is they don't want Satanists to get hold of the residue and the water and use it in satanic practices. I never knew that, and <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Uh, that's just one of the things that he told me about. Um, there's, you know, the, the church dates back to sort of like before the Normans, um, and there's sort of loads of perpendicular add-ons and Victorian add-ons by an architect named Nutt, who just gets to focus, it's really auto-focusing, sorry, um, who sort of used a lot of text and stuff in the stonework. Uh, he was telling me about these coat of arms up here. There's just tons of stuff I kind of wish I'd have uh, filmed him now because literally he's taken, he's like showing me around the tower, places where you can't even normally go. Um, and then you've got this massive tomb here as well. I wish I could remember <laughs> what he said now, but um, it's absolutely unbelievable. 
Honestly, there's so much history here. And uh, you were telling me about the house outside, which apparently is known as the Guild Hall, but it's uh, we don't think it's ever actually been used as a Guild Hall. See, I've been in the tower over here. Um, I'd better just quickly go and shut that door. Um, and apparently, you see, you've got the the modern font there. And they always had a door there as well, and apparently that was they do that before uh, sort of they do a baptism. They open that door to let the devil out. I just little things like that that I just never knew really. Just shut this door. <laughs> Yeah, it's an amazing church, and originally it would have only extended out to here, where these archways are. Those side bits, those aisles either side were added on later in the 1800s, so it was still quite a wide church for such a small village. But of course they're all trying to show off their wealth and their power with sort of other wall trade towns and stuff like that. Up there there would have been a wall painting, which he showed me a picture of in the tower. Um, and yeah, this isn't the original font. The original font is Norman, and it's outside the door. They found it buried, and they unearthed it. I'm just going to quickly open the door and show you that. Um, yeah, that's the original Norman font, or the top part of it, and they found that buried and they've put it in the porch way here the porch is uh is not original yeah i met him over there and an hour later i've come back with like a history lesson it's absolutely brilliant so this uh this uh porch was designed by nut in the 1800s um you got the tower over here so everything was heightened basically it would have been a lot lower the building and um, there was a load of stuff around there as well i don't know if i've got time to show you all of it because literally there was so much stuff i feel like i could give a tour on this place now absolutely brilliant oh yeah this window here uh, not the glass but the coat of arms that are stained glass are actually from pleshy castle those shields are actually from Pleshy Castle. I think that's pretty cool. And yeah, it's an amazing church. Absolutely amazing. Especially once someone tells you the history of the place. It's just, it's mind-blowing. Anyways, right, we better crack on with some walking. <laughs> I'll probably end up being late for work now. It's worth it, though. Yeah, you can sort of see here along the side here where the original width of the the church would have been so all of this bit here was later added on in the 1800s and the, the stone was dressed to make it look like it was of the period but of course all of this here is Norman these corner blocks here they reckon could have been Carn stone from France of course William the Conqueror sort of being, being from like Normandy um, I'm trying to remember what he told me to be honest with you I've forgotten half of it um, these sort of red tiles up here I think he said were Roman um, and you can see some sort of little original archways here that's where the original windows would have been and then this main window here is perpendicular so that was added in a bit later but you can sort of see sort of where the original height of the church would have been um, and where they added it on later and this house here this old house here is amazing this was built, I think, in the 1300s. There's a plaque on the other side. And, uh, yeah, they said it might have been a guild hall at one point, but though he says records showed it never was a guild hall. Um, and, yeah, the chimneys on top, they've got like these little things sticking out of the side of them. You might just be able to see them. <laughs> it was a bit odd. He went, they're quite phallic looking, he says. And we reckon the reason for those being added onto the chimney at some point the guy that owned the house had a bit of beef with some of the other villagers over in the village over there and what he did was he stuck like 
phallic like little things poking out off the sides of the chimney to sort of say up yours to them whether it's true or not I don't know but it's mythology and it's still fascinating and uh, yeah, he was so knowledgeable this Peter bloke he was absolutely fascinating um, yeah hopefully he's going to help me try and sort out maybe sort of uh, visiting the castle which would be brilliant so yeah he's probably not watching this but mate a shout out to you so so appreciated for showing us round um, must have been a good hour and yeah you could tell I had a passion for history I can tell he definitely did I mean unbelievable anyway right oh we better carry on with the walk so yeah this video is going to end up being quite long I'm afraid apologies but I hope you're enjoying it anyway right we're going back over that way If I zoom in over in the distance, you can see the church at Pleshy. So we'll be visiting that, hopefully if I've got a bit of time. Um, and yeah, the village is over there, so nearly uh, nearly back. The, sun's, the sun is coming out, which is nice, but the wind's picking up, so I've sort of waited for a break in the, for the wind to drop, really. Yeah, we've been following this bridleway for a, quite a ways. It's nice and simple navigation. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to Pleshy. Hopefully it's worth I've got time for a quick half a pint in a leather bottle as well before work. in Essex can't beat a bit of tractor action can ya I thought he was going to run me over for a second <laughs> in front of us here is the entrance to Pleshy Castle like I say it's private so you, yeah you can't get in there unfortunately we'll go up to have a quick look though go down that way and that's back towards uh, like the village centre and the leather bottle pub and the white horse as well but of course that's shut down now so here's the moat nice deep moat yeah it would have been uh, one of the biggest uh, mots in England Pleshy it's mentioned in Shakespeare as well according to Peter there we go yeah shame in it another time McLeod another time We'll get in there one day, definitely. Anyways, right, we're heading that way. I'm not meant to be here, but you can actually see um, the 15th century Tudor brick bridge that goes over the the moat into the mot there. It's pretty cool. Okay, and yeah, we're back in the village centre at Pleshy and ahead is the leather bottle pub if it's open I go in for half a pint and there's my car right well that's the end of this walk today um, I hope you've enjoyed it apologies for the wind it has been quite windy um, yeah lots of history um, I will get in that castle one day and I will have a look at it so hopefully Peter will get back to me uh, to him thank you for showing me round um, much appreciated and to you at home thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed it let us know what you think in the comments if you haven't subscribed already please do if you like what you see and uh, yeah you'll see me again no doubt thank you very much see you later another half a pint of Thatcher's gold cider this time £1.80 in a leather bottle here so yeah and quickly have that Head off to work. See you later guys, cheers.